I've been in contact with an attorney uh, over an account in Mississippi uh, over a traffic citation that my wife received on Easter Sunday. <clears throat> and he proceeded to tell me that I was not entitled to discovery. And when I asked him what their standard of proof was, he said, what do you mean? And I said, well, is this a, is this a, a, is this a civil or a criminal matter? And he stated that it was neither. And that, right. because of, and that because of a law in Mississippi called implied consent, that I don't, I'm not entitled to discovery. She's not entitled to discovery. She's right. not entitled to basically anything. So he told me I've got three choices. Guilty, not guilty, or contest the ticket. And I said, well, I, I, I don't have enough information to make an informed pleading at this point, and for me to contest the ticket would be dishonorable. So right. I need I need more information. And he goes, are you an attorney? And I said, no, sir. He goes, well, have you talked to an attorney in Mississippi? And I said, do I need to talk to an attorney in Mississippi? And he stated that it never hurts to talk to an attorney. Well, I got a little, I got a little smart mouth with him, and I let him know what I thought about attorneys, and he hung up the phone on me. So I thought, right. you, you uh -huh. guys, what that'll be. Okay. So I called back, I called back to the courthouse, and I explained to them that I, I've got a situation, and I need to speak to the judge. Mm -hmm. She, she took my name and number, and she left it in the judge's box, is what she tells me. So, uh, they haven't called me back. That was three days ago. But the little tidbit of information that I did get was that it appears that if I don't enter any kind of pleading at this point, they cannot move forward. They can't move the course unless they have basically my consent. So I wondered what you thought about him depriving me the, the right of due process and equal protection of law. I mean, is that valid in their court? Well, like I said, well, to me, when you come dealing with the con what well, I'm saying, I, off the top of my, like I said, it, everybody has a, uh, every every human being on the planet, there's a law. Everybody creates their own law. But what the what the what the government recognizes, they recognize uh, the the way you would define law would be like categories like absolute law. You, you want to do it like a criminal law, administrative law, bankruptcy law, civil law. So, like I said, if, if I just basically did it alphabetically order, which would be ridiculous, it would just be like administrative law, administrative law, absolute law, admiralty law, bankruptcy law, canon law, civil law, common law, constitutional law, contract law, corporate law, criminal law, ecclesiastical law, equity law, family law, federal law. So when you ask them, is this civil law? No. Is this criminal? No. Is it one of these other 28? Possibly. Or maybe it's a private law established between a contract and you and Department of Motor Vehicles. I don't know. So, like, you, would, you could say to the other side, what law is moving this court? You, but you don't say it to the judge. You say it to the prosecutor. Who's moving the case before the court? Now, what did the prosecutor define the law as? Uh, he did. He, said, he gave me unsolicited legal advice. There you go. There you go. You just What you need to do is submit a bill of particular. You just say to him, okay, I got the bill. I got your bill. Now, I got, now I need, I got your invoice. Now, I need the invoice statement. Give me the bill of particulars. And one thing I need to know in particular is what law is this? Show me the law that you're relying upon to prove your claim before this court. Or complaint. I don't care. Or civil law, bankruptcy, or amnesty, or, or all those ecclesiastical equity. Whatever other law that I just said, because it's basically there's billions of laws, billions and trillions of laws. We read laws every freaking day. So just because it's, no, it's not civil, no, it's not criminal, you people just think there's two laws. That's ridiculous. All uh, right. I got you. I got you. So it goes, it goes back to establishing to know what, not venue, but what jurisdiction you're in. Jurisdiction. What's jurisdiction mean? What's jurisdiction mean? Uh, I guess jurisdiction to me means the place of action. No. I mean, that's, that's a venue. Jurisdiction okay. means gives you the right to control me. Control okay. and jurisdiction is the same thing. Because our contract controls you. And you perform a certain duties, obligations, and functions, and you have certain privileges and rights ascribed within that contract. Okay. okay. There you go. That's jurisdiction. Not well, I'll, do, I'll, I'll do some research on bill of particulars then. Thanks, Paul. Right, because because if I can jump in real quick, because what the legalese people are going to tell you is that it's got to be either in res, in rem, um, or in personam. And when it comes to legalese, or, or, or subject matter. Right. I, I, made, I said that at the beginning. I said but, the legalese people will tell you it's got to be.
be either in res, in rem, in personam, or subject matter. Okay? The whole point of it, the whole point of it, the whole point of it is that you can't have, you cannot have in res, in rem, in personam, or subject matter if the law does not apply. Well, the law the, is the jurisdiction. There's so much the law doesn't apply if the law does not exist. Okay. Does it apply or exist? Six well, one half of the other I said. He was you attempting have, to he was attempting to misfly a statute to me. And, it doesn't and I, and I didn't want I know, it doesn't matter. I didn't want to get into it with him at that point. But even reading the statute, he's I believe he's committing constructive fraud. That's okay. Whatever what I'm saying, he at this point has the whole he has the gun, he has the whole ball of wax. It's right. his court. It's his court. It's his claim. It's his complaint. You haven't established court yet. You haven't filed a counterclaim yet. So you can't be a defendant. You want to be a defendant, you're going to get clobbered. Yeah. So you want to operate under his law. You, you've, heard my, you've heard me talk about this many times, right? You've yeah. heard me. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. You have to understand you have to establish your own claim, okay? And so that they're moving this court with no claim before this court. There is no law before this court. Where's the law? I've asked them a million times. Where's the law? And he has to produce the law. And he can't do it. He can't do it verbally. You want to see it in writing. In writing. Oh, that would make him say, "Well, oh, under uh, Mississippi Code 48." No, you put it in writing. You show me. You show me. So you start square one, and you're not ready to proceed in any any kind of tribunal or hearing or dispositional matter or or trial until you're ready to go. You're going to stay okay. the proceeding. You're going to stay the proceeding until you're confident to stand. Until you understand what, the, how the hell do you? I, I still don't understand how you're doing this to me. You're going to have to show me. Keep showing me. Keep showing me. And when it comes to a civil matter like this with the state, the state can't force you to be confident until you're ready. You just say, you just keep playing this ridiculous, uh, 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 if you want to do English common law, you can play this uh, volley back and forth all the time, you know, if somebody files a complaint against you. And then it's, 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 it's in this uh, subjection, and then it's uh, and then it's a counterclaim, and then you just keep volleying back and forth because this guy really don't care. Because the, right. reason why, the reason why he doesn't care is because he's getting paid. He doesn't kind of care less if this goes on for the next twenty years. And while that ticket is outstanding like that, they're gonna they're gonna convert that 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 ticket, that citation. They're using it as uh, as proof that there's that value of the ticket, a hundred dollar ticket, and they're. Uh, right. Hundred dollar ticket, and you know how people are trading on a derivative and all that up. Right, right. They're they're claiming it as asset. Right, but what I'm saying is, when when you get to the certain point, I don't know if you've heard of it, see my thing, uh, heard my stuff. I love tickets. I love citations because I'm going to file a counterclaim, and whatever the value is on that ticket is going to establish prima facie proof that that ticket, that citation, is worth a hundred dollars. So not only do I believe that's worth a hundred dollars, and he believes it's worth a hundred dollars, well now I believe not only it's worth a hundred dollars in the citation, but that proves that now you've wasted my time, my resources, my energy, my my pace. You, you and I'm going to not only claim all equity in that citation, but I'm going to I'm going to place damages of wasting my time for filing a false claim against me. So I love tickets. <laughs>